My name is Greg Check. Uh, I'm a plumbing contractor, and I was asking uh, the lady if the life cycle studies were going to include the criteria of under what conditions is that life cycle uh, stated. Well, it's going to involve the application of the usage, and you know, dependent on each committee or each area, it may have to take into certain considerations of. Um, like, for example, the food service equipment, uh, how it's maintained, and whether or not it, exposure to certain certain areas of where it's being apl uh, applied, um, meaning it could be different for each application. So that would be up to the industry to make sure that they address that. If it is an issue from that industry's perspective, then it would or should be addressed within that. But again, that would be determined by the committee. We have another question here. I'm Harvey Sachs, and I'm old enough not to be confused, but I'm still confused. <laughs> and the particular issue this time is turf. There are a large number of standard setting consensus organizations in the world, mm -hmm. and I sometimes get very confused about what ASTM does versus what ASHRAE does or versus what many other organizations do. And you all want to be the preeminent, but is there bound to, are there bounds on your preeminence? Um, well, ASTM International does not want to duplicate efforts. So if the industry is coming to us for a specific standards need and there isn't an already existing one, meaning there's not a standard for that already existing, then we would be willing to undertake that. Now, it would need to fit within a particular committee. Um, there are times when there is a standard that would be more beneficial developed under, say, ASHRAE, where all the expertise is already there and the standards are already there, in which case the industry would go there. But the industry is a pro approaching us, and as ASTM staff, we're there to help facilitate those standards development for the industry. Um, but, you know, again, the idea is not to duplicate efforts. So if you're aware of it occurring in another area, then it could be best and better served for the industry for you to take that standards development there. Excellent question, by the way. Um, what's on IATMO and ASTM, what's the working relationship there? Um, I personally, within my committees, have not dealt too much with IATMO, but uh, we do maintain open communications, and the goal, again, would be not to duplicate the efforts. And you mentioned that people in the room are welcome to participate in committees, technical meetings. Who mm -hmm. would they contact? Is there contact information? Uh, how would they get involved? Uh, yes. Um, well, actually, all of the information and contact information for each particular committee has a staff, every committee has a staff manager to it, so you could always reach out and contact the staff manager. You can contact myself and I'd be happy to get you in touch with the appropriate person if it's not my committee. But we also do have meetings information on our website and registration for our meetings is free. It's open about eight weeks prior to a meeting. Um, so if you're not contacting staff, our website has a ton of information on it for you. Particularly, F26 meets again next face-to-face -face in October, and E44 on the Renewable Energies meets at the end of June in Kansas City. Just one more question. With the uh, committees, subcommittees, are, are these, like the geothermal and the PV, are these long-standing committees, or are these formed in response to market industry needs? Uh, they are formed in response to um, market industry needs, but as long as those standards are um, published, then the subcommittee will continue to exist unless the jurisdiction is transferred to another committee. Our standards are required to go through a five-year review, so every five years the ballot action needs to be taking place on these standards to make sure that they're up-to-date and they're relevant to the industry still. Technologies. Um, standards are, you know, obviously kind of in the background, but no less important than the, the innovations themselves, mm -hmm. correct? That is correct. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, just the demand that's placed upon standards organizations uh, such as ASTM and, um, you know, is it kind of a struggle to keep up with the innovations? 
Well, all of the standards development is driven by the industry, really. So as long as we have the, if there's an existing committee already out there, then you know, putting that standard or getting that technology standardized uh, tends to be a relatively easy process for us to manage, and we've been doing it for over 100 years. So right. it sort of just comes you know, with, with naturally now. But right. um, we, uh, we do have a, a good amount of industry drive. So as long as the industry wants to move it forward, we can help make it happen. So the green movement per se isn't really that much different from something standards organizations have been doing for a century. And that is correct. I mean, there are a lot of new standards types of development, things like life cycle costs or accelerated lifetime testing, where it's sort of uh, a, a new challenge where you just have to uh, learn a new process to get the committees educated on it and get the industry educated on how they want to move forward with it. And usually once one, like accelerated lifetime testing is just, you know, how do you uh, accelerate or make 30 years occur within five. And so those are some of the challenges that they come across where they're trying to kind of evaluate the impact on that, that products have or that things have on the environment. Um, just in general, how have you felt about the symposium so far? I personally have found it very educational. I don't have any technical expertise. ASTM staff doesn't. Um, however, when you c I come to the symposiums, particularly this one, I was able to learn a lot more about what's happening with the industry and some of the issues that they face. So. All right, thank you very much. Yeah.